Hello and welcome back to Sunshine Teachers Training. It's always a pleasure to have you with us as we explore the wonders of Montessori education together. Today we're embarking on a fascinating journey around the world right from our classrooms. We're diving into the engaging and educational resource known as the Montessori Country Box. Let's start by answering the question, what exactly is a Montessori Country Box? Well, it's like a little treasure chest filled with materials that represent different aspects of a country, such as its flag, the maps, cultural items, pictures, and sometimes even clothing. It's a hands-on interactive way to bring geography and cultural studies to life. Each box provides children with a unique sensory experience, allowing them to see, touch, and feel elements of different cultures and geographical locations. Before we talk more about the benefits of the Montessori Country Box, here's a video for you to watch where I presented this to my online students. Have a look and then we'll talk some more. Okay, children, today we are going on an imaginary trip. Who wants to come with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we are going to the green continent. Can you see my box is green? Mm -hmm. So we're going to the green continent. Do you know which continent that is? Yeah. Africa, right. Let's see where we are going today. I have some beautiful objects from this country, okay? And I'm going to show you what we have here, okay? Today, we are traveling to Egypt. And here I have a map of Egypt, okay? Can you see that? That's a map of Egypt. Do you see this blue line going through? What do you think it is? River. Do you know what it's called? Anybody? Nile. The River Nile, right. The River Nile is the longest river in the whole world. Okay? And here we have this book from Egypt. And we've got all these lovely pictures. Okay? What do you think you see here? Pyramids, right, and the Sphinx. These are all things that you can see when you go to Egypt. And if you look at the map later, I'll lay it out for you, and you'll see the pyramids are over here along the river and the Sphinx. And we have different kinds of pictures. That's what the city looks like, okay? So we'll also keep this book out for you to look at later. Okay. The capital city of Egypt is called Cairo. Can you say that? Cairo. Cairo, right. This is a book that has all these different pictures that you can see of things you can see in Cairo. Okay. Here we have the money. Okay. Is this is what it looks like. It's called the Egyptian pound. Can you say that? Egyptian pound. Right. That's what the Egyptian money looks like. And I also have some Egyptian coins here to show you. Okay. Okay. We even have one that has a little hole in it. And they're called Egyptian shillings. Can you say that? Right. And these are, we have some money here. And we have Egyptian stamps as well. So if you're posting a letter, this is what the stamps look like. And here are some more stamps for us to look at from Egypt. Beautiful, right? Okay. Let's see what else we have here. This is the flag of Egypt. <laughs> what colors do you see on it? And in the middle, we have an eagle, okay? Right. Here we have some postcards from Egypt, okay? What do you see in this one? Right, the pyramids and the sphinx. And these are? Right, these are the three great pyramids of Giza, all right? And this animal is very popular there. What is it called? Camel. Right. You see a lot of camels in Egypt. 
because there's a lot of desert there. And this is what the local people look like. It can get very hot in Egypt, and so people like to wear loose clothes, all right? The women cover their heads with a scarf. The men sometimes wear a turban. And here we have a model of the pyramids, okay? And I have another one as well, okay? And this one has different kinds of writing on it. Okay. Egyptians were some of the first people to invent writing, but they didn't write with letters, they wrote with pictures. It was called hieroglyphics. Can you say that? Hieroglyphics. Right, and here's a souvenir, okay, and it's got a picture of a famous queen. Do you know what her name was? Cleopatra. That's right, that's Cleopatra. And on the other side, we have another queen. Do you know what she was called? Nefertiti. Nefertiti. And all here we've got different kinds of hieroglyphics. Here's another one. And here we have, you can see it, it's a pharaoh. A pharaoh is what they call the kings. In Egypt they were called pharaohs. I have a bigger picture for you here of a pharaoh. Okay. Alright. This pharaoh, his name was King Tutankhamun. They also called him King Tut. Okay, it's a very famous pharaoh in Egypt. And you can see their headdress, how they used to wear it. Now, when these pharaohs died, they would bury them, they would build a pyramid and bury them with all their riches and their favorite things inside these pyramids. And they were called tombs. The Egyptians were also, that's Nefertiti again, the Egyptians were also the people who invented paper. This was the earliest paper. Later you can feel it. They made it from wood and trees. And it was called papyrus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here we have some more coins from Egypt. Okay. And because this was bought a long time ago, we have a DVD. <laughs> so maybe we can watch it if we find a DVD player. <laughs> all these things have come all the way from Egypt. Okay. The Egyptians are thought to be one of the oldest civilizations. And we also have this stencil, which is hieroglyphics. Okay, and I'll put it into the practical area art shelf and you can find the letters of your name and write your name in hieroglyphics later, okay? And we also have this lovely storybook, okay, from Egypt, so we can read it. I'll put it in the book corner and we can read it when we have time. And here's another bead of jewelry made from stone okay so today we've traveled where egypt. to egypt has anybody been to egypt from our group no okay but we travel there today with our class and what did we find out about egypt who can tell me anything that we learned about egypt so there's so many camels what else what's the capital city Cairo, right. Do you remember what the money is called? And the coins? Shillings, okay. And um, what is the river called? Nile. Nile, okay. And what do we find along the river Nile? The pyramids, right. The pyramids of Giza. Do you remember what the rulers are called? Pharaoh, right. And what was the name of the most famous one? Tutankhamun. So I'm going to display all of these things on a table. And then when you have some free time, you can go and look at it. But remember, these are treasures of our classroom. So when we're handling them, we want to be very, very careful. They've come all the way from Egypt. We don't know who's going to go back and replace it for us if it gets damaged. 
So make sure you handle them with lots of love and care. Okay? Do you have any questions you'd like to ask about Egypt? Okay. All right. So uh, let's put this away. And okay. So um, we have different country boxes in our classroom from whatever countries we can get. Of course, we would never start with Egypt. We would start with our home country. So we would start with the box of Indonesia. And we would have different kinds of things that represent the culture, the monuments, the currency, the flag, the map, um, the animals, uh, whatever you can get. The costumes, you can get the clothing. Sometimes the children can wear it. Try on things like hats and jewelry and things like that. Are we okay? It should be interactive. So you're asking the children questions and they are telling you what they know, not just you throwing information out at them, okay? After you've done something like this, it doesn't end here. Just like we made, made uh, we put out for you guys to do in your assignments, to come up with ideas of having extensions and variations into other areas of the Montessori curriculum. So we would have some activities in practical life, we could have some cooking, we could have some dancing, we could learn some songs, we could, if we have enough of these beads, we could use them in cards and counters. Um, this could go in your practical life. You could learn about ancient writing as a part of language. You could make large pictures of Egypt. So you've got to, it doesn't just end with the box, you get me? You've got to extend it and make that learning go deeper for the children. Like normally, the school year in Indonesia starts about middle of July to beginning of uh, Let's say some people start in August. So we, and we have the Indonesian Independence Day also in August. So August, we would take to learn Indonesia. So we would build that theme, like you guys presented the other day. You presented the box of uh, the theme, the curriculum web, right? So we would follow on. This would be part of it. We would learn about the map, you know, uh, cooking. There would be activities there in practical life, etc. So that could go on for a month. Maybe when Chinese New Year comes along, then we would do a China box. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, depends on what you celebrate in your country. De um, depends on what you have access to. You know, are we okay? Mm -hmm. So there's no fixed thing that you have to do like one country box a month. Mm -hmm. And of course, how to get that many country boxes? Also, mm -hmm. we are lucky if we have one country box from every continent. We are lucky if we do, but not many schools do. Some maybe just have three or four, you know. All okay? Any questions? Exploring a country doesn't just end at the country box. There are so many ways that you can extend this. You can choose to do some cooking from the country. You could learn dances from this country. You could incorporate different items and elements into your math your practical life or even your sensorial areas. So it can just keep deepening the child's understanding and knowledge of a different culture and a different country. Now I'm sure you're wondering about the benefits of incorporating the Montessori country box into your learning environment. Let's explore this, okay? Firstly, the country box makes learning fun and engaging. Instead of just reading about a country in a book, children can explore various physical items that represent the country and it makes it more interactive and it's a tactile learning experience. Secondly, it fosters a sense of global citizenship. When children explore different countries using the country box, they develop an understanding of diversity and they learn to respect and appreciate other cultures. Thirdly, the country box encourages curiosity and inquiry. Children naturally want to know more about the items that they're holding, sparking interesting discussions and further research. And finally, it supports interdisciplinary learning. The country box isn't just about geography. It encompasses history, social studies, and even language and art. It's a comprehensive tool that brings several subjects together. Implementing the country box in your classroom or your home can truly transform your child's or your student's learning experiences. It broadens their perspectives and nurtures their appreciation for the beautiful diversity that our world has to offer. And with that, we've come to the end of our journey today.
We hope this peek inside the Montessori Country Box has sparked ideas for your own classroom or homeschooling environment. As always, thank you for joining us here at Sunshine Teachers Training. Remember, each like, share and subscription lights up our day just a little bit more. So don't forget to hit those buttons. Your support helps us continue providing valuable content for our Montessori community. Until next time, keep shining, my educators. After all, you're helping shape the global citizens of tomorrow. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.